Hey guys, welcome back to Say Mojo Homestead. Today is processing day. Whoop, whoop. So we're gonna process these chickens and fill our freezer. Yeah, this is our second round. We have our friend Charlie coming to help us and also our neighbors are helping us. Yeah. They are our neighbors that are kind of slowly getting into the homestead thing. I mean, they wanna be all in, but they're, I think, personally doing it the right way and taking yeah. their time and one thing at a time. So um, they're gonna be here helping us. We're gonna talk about the two breeds that we've done because this is a different breed. This is actually Cornish Cross that we did this time. Last time we did Big Red Broiler from Murray McMurray. And so I'm excited to tell you guys, share what we think about these two breeds now that we've raised them fully. And yeah, kind of our opinion of them and the pros and cons to both. If you haven't subscribed to our channel, we just invite you to join our YouTube family. Also, comment below if you have an opinion about Cornish Cross or a Red Broiler and if you've raised them and what your experience was. So we got our chickens processed. It was actually yep. a perfect day for it. it was. And we had such good help with, from yes. Charlie and our neighbors. Everybody jumped in and we just got it done really, really fast. Yeah, it was awesome. That's just 28 more chickens yeah. in the freezer. That's and Charlie awesome. brought yep. some. So yep. we'll actually show you guys the process because we processed, I think it was like 32, 33 with Charlie's somewhere in there. Yeah. In less than a minute. So you can watch it right now. Super fast <laughs> but it really did only take like an hour uh, probably I think it was probably yeah yeah it wasn't more than an hour for sure right and the girls helped the kids were a huge help yeah. so and I was proud of them I was too they got in there yep we may have told them that they were definitely gonna help this go around yeah. <laughs> But uh, they did a good job. They, they did. They did a good job. And we, they were good sports yes. about it. And we only told them they had to do five each. Yeah. So it's not like we made them do all of them. Right, right. What we really want to do in this video is compare the two breeds. Yes. And talk about kind of the pros and cons from our experience yeah. and our opinions. Yes, yes. Um, from, oh my gosh, look at that squash flower. Uh, no, it's like coming up straight from the dirt, it looks like. I know, but it's huge. It's about to yeah. open. Yeah. Okay, uh, anyway. <laughs> this, is what, this is what happens when you film in the garden. I do want to say off the bat that this is strictly a comparison of the breeds, yeah. not the hatcheries, because they did come from two different hatcheries. Right. And so, uh, real quick, I want to mention that. One of them came from, I believe it was a little mountain hatchery. If that's wrong, I'll correct it. And the other ones that we got the first go round were from Murray McMurray. Uh, really, the only reason we switched it up is because the little mountain one could get them to us really That's fast. True. But their yeah. only options were Cornish Cross, which is really why we went to the Cornish Cross this time. We were happy with both. Um, both companies sent us great looking chicks. They were healthy. We had no casualties right off the bat. Like they were really good chicks. So we'll start with casualty rate because that is something that, you know, does happen occasionally. So we did big red broilers from Murray McMurray the first go round. And then these were your traditional Cornish cross. In both batches, we did end up losing two before butchering day. Don't really know the cause of any of them. Overall, very hardy, both yeah. breeds, very uh, healthy through the whole growing out period. Good experience with both companies. So, pros and cons with both, but yeah. we'll start with a negative. Yes. And we'll do Cornish Cross first. Yeah. Because they were the chicken of the day. Yep. And then we'll do the big red broilers. Yep. 
So you want to start with cons? Sure. What I didn't like about these, about the Cornish cross, was that they didn't feel like chickens. They weren't as, um, they weren't as energetic. They laid around a lot. They um, went through their feed faster because they don't forage as much. And they have less feathers, which I just, they don't look as pretty. Um, as the big the red other, trailer. And the other thing to consider with that is they probably would not do quite as well in the cold seasons. Right, yeah. Um, the pros to the Cornish crosses are that they grow out a lot faster. These were right at eight weeks, so yep. two months old, yeah. and they were up to butchering weight. Um, so they do go through their food faster, but they're also not eating for as long. Long, yeah. So and so great. they do, they grow out much faster, which is why most people go with them. Yeah. The other pro is that they have noticeably bigger breasts. Um, so much so that some of these chickens actually look like round balls walking around, <laughs> waddling around. <laughs> and for us, we want to do like our own sliced deli meat. So that's a big plus for us in our household. Yes, yes. So definitely a lot more breast meat on them. So because we haven't actually cooked one or taste a corn tasted a Cornish, Cornish cross, we'll actually do a follow-up video later about um, their weight, comparing the weight and the flavor. Yes, and when we finish going through the comparison, the pros and cons, we'll also let you know right now where we stand with what we prefer. So, big red broilers. Yes. Let's do pros and cons for that. Okay. I will start with the cons. Mm -hmm. um, cons are definitely that they take longer. They take one month longer, which is significantly longer when you're talking about a two month period and a three month period. And um, you're buying feed for that three months. Exactly. That is definitely a con with them. Another one could be, depending on what you're looking for, slightly smaller breasts. They still have a good size breast to them because that's, they're a meat chicken. Like yeah. that's really growth rate, feather density, and breast size are all three key things in meat breeds. And yeah. so you're gonna get good size breasts, less feathers, um, and a fast growing bird if it's a meat specific breed. Uh, but there just seem to be a little bit smaller on that end. The other con, and Cass will probably talk about this in the pros, because they are slightly more energetic, they, I wouldn't say they were mean, but they were definitely a little more standoffish, but also not even aggressive. I'm not sure what the word is. The Cornish crosses would literally like flock to me when I went in there to feed them. The big red broilers would not, and it was almost like they didn't want me in there. It was, they weren't fearful, but they never attacked me, but they were just a little more like, what are you doing? As opposed to the Cornish crosses that are like, oh, what's up? What are you doing? So with kids, if kids are helping with the chores, would Cornish cross be a better Not necessarily, option? because they weren't aggressive. Okay. The big red broilers are a little more standoffish, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. Mm -mm. The Cornish crosses are a much more friendly bird in our experience, but yeah. I've heard from other homesteaders where they have the exact opposite. So yeah. the reason I would say it's a con is when it comes to butchering day, you know, we have ours in a chicken tractor, but it does make it a little yeah. bit harder to catch them. Whereas the Cornish crosses sort of <laughs> sit there. Wait their turn. <laughs> so pros? Pros. Or big red broiler. Okay, so I think they're pretty, which is important, which I like having a pretty bird to look at, you know? They have more Last feathers. Time. That's the other con. They have, they do have more feathers in the Cornish cross, but they're not going to have nearly as many feathers as your egg laying chickens. Yeah. They walk around and you can have them out and feel like you have a tractor full of really fun, healthy chickens in your yard. And they forage more, which is great, obviously, for your bug control and your keeping your grass healthy and all mm -hmm. of that. Um, and it's nice because we had them in our orchard, so having them forage in there was nice too. Um, the other pro is cleaning them out and processing them. I saw that there was a whole lot more fat to the big red broiler, which obviously will help them have flavor. We can't compare the flavors, but we know that the big red broilers have been really tasty. Mm -hmm. And so to me, I am anticipating them not being quite as 
juicy and tender because I cleaning out those birds, I could see there was a lot more fat underneath that layer of skin. Yeah, the stock that we've gotten from them yes. has been amazing. So just again, very curious to see how these Cornish crawls compare. Word on the street is your big red broilers, what you trade in the amount of time that it takes to raise them out, you gain in flavor. Um, and the, you know, obviously vice versa, you sacrifice some in flavor for a faster grow out time and potentially probably cheaper on the food and everything else. Right. We didn't really do a food to weight uh, or growth ratio, keep up with that. Um, but I'm assuming overall, you're probably spending less on food for a fasting grow faster growing chicken, yeah. even though they went through it faster in that two months. Yeah, and even though the big red broilers are foraging. Yeah, I mean, that does help, but they're still gonna flock to grain. Yeah. A chicken's gonna prefer grain. All right, so for preference, which one do we prefer? At this point? At this point, with taste test being left out of it. You gotta take that out of the equation. Right, right, right. Only from a raising the chicken standpoint, which one do you prefer? I prefer the big red broiler just because I I prefer it to look and act more like our egg layers. Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, I would agree. The chickens are kind of my deal yeah, on the homestead, really. so I raise them. But really for the same reason, this is not a criticism to anyone who prefers the Cornish crosses yeah. because I can definitely see the benefits. If I have my choice, I am going to go with the big red broiler because of the same reason they look like chickens and personally i have a problem when an animal grows out so fast because of i mean they're bred to do that yeah um, i get that i understand that but bread or grows out so fast that they can't really support their body but i think that if it came down to you know it was we needed something fast and yes. we needed to grow them out quickly we would do it again our next round is coming in a few weeks <laughs> and they are the big red broilers again. Yes. So excited about that. So now it's time for... Cuddle time? <laughs> for highs and lows. Yes. My high this week is probably that we are getting into show stuff and so I'm over costumes and last week all the kids got their costumes and we had it went very smoothly, much smoother than I anticipated. And only one person needs their costume altered. Wow, that's good. Yeah. So, um, cuts I'm down really... on the chaos in the yes. last like month. Yeah. So, I'm really excited about that. My low is probably um, just kind of being anxious and nervous about the next month and putting the show together and all the details. Last minute stuff. Yes. Yeah. Uh, my high was definitely today. Processing. Yeah. Get a break from chickens. For two weeks. Yeah, you know, maybe, maybe three. <laughs> maybe. I don't really remember the date they come. <laughs> I want to say it's the end of the month. We'll find out. Um, but yeah, so that was definitely a high. And my other high, I had another, have another high. It actually has not happened yet. But we have, I used oh, to be yeah. in youth ministry and like a long time ago. And we have one of our old youth that reached out to us that asked us about homesteading and wanted to kind of come see what we were doing and ask some questions because they're wanting to get into it. Mm -hmm. And so I'm just, I'm really excited about that. One, yeah. just when anybody is, you know, starting that whole lifestyle of homesteading, but it just makes that much more special that it's like one of our old youth that we get to really reconnect with. Right. So, and one we were close to. So I'm yeah. excited about it. So that. I'm excited. They're coming over uh, tomorrow night for dinner. So. That'll be fun. My low is that the basement slash crawl space mm -hmm. is still kind of up in the air as to what we, if we're gonna have to go through insurance um, or whatnot. So we'll see. The dehumidifier did show up and we got that hooked up. So it is now feeding this pond behind us, yes. <laughs> which is awesome. nice. But yeah, just still loose ends there. Yeah. They have not been tied up yet. Yeah. Thank you to everyone who came and helped us today. We really, really appreciate you guys. Yes, definitely. Um, just part of what makes the, you know, homesteading community, I guess, work yeah. is just jumping in and helping each other. Uh, once we finished up, I ran over to 
Charlie's homesteading in Hungary and helped him with a construction project they've got going on over there. Mm -hmm. So that was fun, kind of trading off, uh, yeah. helping each other today. So thank you guys for joining us, for coming along. I hope that you learned something. I yeah. hope that maybe this helps if you're looking at getting into meat chickens, that um, this gives you a little bit of insight. Yep. Uh, from our standpoint anyway, and what we have experienced, but mm -hmm. definitely do your research. As always, like getting into any animal, um, I would say with anything, make sure you do your upfront research, know what yeah. you're getting into so that you have a better idea of what to expect when you start raising that animal. Yeah. So have a great week guys and be blessed.